In today's video, I want to go over some information about Days Gone that, well, I find relatively shocking. It is the biggest launch so far this year in the UK, and it has overtook Mortal Kombat 11 in terms of physical sales. We don't have a lot of numbers to work on, but so far, Days Gone has hit the ground running, and it is doing incredibly well from a commercial standpoint, which might be a little bit surprising to some of you guys, given how the critical reception was. But it looks like there absolutely is still an appetite for open-world zombie or freaker adventures, and these games are here to stay so we'll talk a little bit about that also borderlands 3 is one of the most anticipated games of the year it'll be out in september However, a lot of you guys are waiting to see more gameplay of the title, and more gameplay is coming very soon, specifically on May 1st. We'll talk about that, and the official statement that Gearbox put out on the official Borderlands website. And lastly, A Plague Tale Innocence is one of my more anticipated games for the month of May. I think this game could end up surprising a lot of people, and we got a lengthy uncut gameplay trailer for the game, showcasing about 8 minutes of gameplay. Game is shaping up very nicely, and we'll cover that at the end of this video. First up, let's go over the news about Days Gone. It is the biggest launch so far this year in the UK, so we don't have a lot of commercial numbers to work with right now, but this game, by the initial looks of it, it is selling very well. Initial reviews from critics were a little bit of a mixed bag, but it looks like commercially the game is doing well. However, it did fall a little bit with the numbers that we do have to work with. It's about 27% lower of the top tier PlayStation 4 exclusives like God of War and Spider-Man. Do note that God of War and Spider-Man were colossal successes. I believe Spider-Man in its first three days sold like three million copies and God of War was around that level. Those two games sold very comparably and they were two of the most successful PlayStation 4 exclusives of all time and they're games with track records behind them. God of War, one of the most iconic PlayStation franchise ever and Spider-Man is while well, Spider-Man and it was done by Insomniac Games, a studio that's a lot more known than say a Sony Ben studio. So coming in at just 27% lower with the initial numbers we have, man that means Days Gone is gonna break through that 7 figure sold mark very easily and very comfortably and it's gonna approach you know millions of copies sold multiple millions of copies and i think they gotta be very happy with that and this is generally gonna be the type of game where i think more and more people are gonna buy it over time even though the reception was a little bit of a mixed bag from the get-go it seems like gamers themselves are really enjoying it and taking it for what it is. I think a lot of us understood that not every game is gonna be at the quality level of a God of War or of a Spider-Man, and when playing Days Gone, we can just enjoy it for it being a great open world with great visuals, a pretty good story. There's just a lot to like about the game, so I'm very happy to see the game is selling well. Unlike a game like The Order 1886, where that game came from a very similar background in that it was ready at dawn, a studio that had worked on a lot of portable games, making the foray into a big budget PlayStation 4 title. That game was received pretty mixed, and then it did didn't sell that great either. In the case of Days Gone, the reception's definitely stronger from a critical standpoint than in Order 1886, but the game is also doing very well, and I'm just super happy to see that. I think we've gotten to a point where if there's this big budget type of PlayStation 4 exclusive being released, I think gamers are just gonna get inherently excited at this point. Now, obviously, they have to keep the quality level at a certain point, and at a certain level, but Days Gone had a sizable promotional push to it. It didn't have a gigantic name attached to it, but it looks like the game is still doing rather strongly, and given all of the big games that were released this year, Days Gone being at the top of the list, hey, that's very impressive. To give you guys an idea of what were the top 10 releases in the UK for the week, you've got Days Gone at number 1, number 2 was Mortal Kombat 11, number 3 was FIFA 19, and then it's rounded out by some older games, Red Dead Redemption 2 at number 4, Division 2 at number 5, Mario Kart 8 at number 6, Sekiro still holding up there at number 7. Forza Horizon 4 at number 8. Number 9 is New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. And number 10 is World War Z, which is a relatively recent release as well. But I think there was this notion about a lot of people expecting Days Gone to be a flop. I don't think that's the case at all. And I do think what this opens the door to is Sony trusting Sony Ben Studio with a significant budget to create another big budget product. And I think from here on out, Sony Ben's games are just gonna get better and better. They've set a great foundation with Days Gone, but this was their first big budget game in a very long time. Working on games like Uncharted, Golden Abyss, and Siphon Filter is one thing. Working on a huge game like Days Gone is a completely different animal and it looks like they've delivered big time, at least from a commercial standpoint and at the end of the day, that is what matters from a business standpoint. I'm sure the developers themselves wanted the game to be received better even though it's being received relatively well. A 72 Metacritic score isn't anything to hang your head on. That's a very good score. It's just that at this point, we've been acclimated to getting PlayStation 4 games that are received at, you know, a 94 and 87 is seen as kind of low when an 
87 is a remarkable score as well. And you see these Nintendo games getting 93s and 94s, and sometimes I don't even agree with all of the scores, but nonetheless, Metacritic has become such a powerful tool, and a tool we put a lot of weight on, and probably rightfully so. It's important to hear what the critics think, but in the case of Days Gone, even though the critics weren't overwhelmingly positive about the game, I think it's getting lost in translation a little bit that the game was still received positively and gamers now playing it are really enjoying it and that's great to see and it looks like commercially this game is doing really well. It'll be interesting to see by the end of the year when we get some specifics will this game crack the 3 million number pretty easily? I think that would be a pretty remarkable feat for a game like Days Gone because again unlike God of War and unlike Spider-Man even if you were expecting this game to be at that level just know that this game does not have the name appeal of a God of War or a Spider-Man so it being just 27% lower, I think that's pretty incredible, all things considered. Alright, moving on from that, enough rambling about Days Gone. Borderlands 3 is a game that we know is gonna sell incredibly well. We've been waiting for Borderlands 3 for a while now. The release of Borderlands 2 came all the way back in 2012. Pre-sequel I know came in 2014, but we want Borderlands 3 and it'll finally be dropping this September. However, we still haven't gotten much gameplay for the title, but that'll be changing come May 1st as announced on the official Borderlands website. Following a 30-minute pre-show, the first Borderlands 3 gameplay will be streamed here at Borderlands.com and on the Borderlands Twitch channel starting at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. BST on May 1st. Many interesting Borderlands theories, some of them with decent accuracy ratings, have been floated following frame-by-frame -frame dissections of gameplay trailers over the past couple weeks. A number of you have even said about cracking some hidden codes, but you haven't found them all yet. We'll just drop this image here as a hint, maybe give it another look. They dropped the Borderlands 3 promotional image. I don't really know how to decipher that, and they continue by saying, despite some incredible internet sleuthing, countless questions raised by you, the amazing Borderlands community remain unanswered. When will we learn about the four new Vault Hunters? Who exactly are the Calypso Twins? Who's the young girl bumping fists with Maya? And how the heck do guns grow legs? We're excited to answer at least some of these questions and lots more during the Borderlands 3 Worldwide Gameplay Reveal event on May 1st. The event will feature the first ever showing of Borderlands 3 gameplay as well as commentary from the Gearbox development team on everything from the new Vault Hunters and their respective skills to interplanetary travel and sweet, sweet loot. Shortly after the Gearbox presentation, you'll be able to watch literally hundreds of your favorite live streamers playing and sharing their impressions of Borderlands 3 for the first time. Whether you're a longtime Borderlands fan or a newcomer to the franchise, the first look at what's coming September 13th is a must-see. And you can sign up for the newsletter at the link below to receive a reminder email ahead of the event and be the first to hear about new Borderlands 3 info in the coming months. Of course, the game's release isn't all too far off. It'll be dropping September 13th. Love to see that with games so many times in games, and I point to Square Enix all the time with this. They'll announce a game, you know, four or five years before it's ready to release. All of the anticipation disappears by the time the game's actually ready to release and you climaxed way ahead. But in the case of Borderlands 3, the anticipation was at a fever pitch and you're just carrying that over with the release of the game just a few months later. Could you imagine if Borderlands 3 was announced right now and then it wouldn't be released until like early 2021? I actually do believe that would have harmed the overall anticipation for the game, but I think Gearbox is doing a really good job with how they're promoting the game. And again, the official gameplay reveal will come May 1st. And lastly, another game that I'm excited for and it'll be out very soon is A Plague Tale Innocence and the official PlayStation YouTube channel uploaded an uncut gameplay trailer spanning about 8 minutes and it gives you an idea of what to expect from the game and I think after this gameplay trailer, a lot more people are excited for what A Plague Tale Innocence could offer. Being done by Asobo Studios, it's their debut new IP A Plague Tale Innocence and it's coming May 14th taking you on an adventure through medieval war-torn and plague-ridden France with siblings Amika and Hugo. A new gameplay trailer showcases world first footage on a brand new level showing off a little more of what the game has to offer, careful use of the environment, puzzle solving, and how light and darkness and the rats are friend and foe in tandem. Amiga must make it to the university past the Inquisition's worst and through a town racked with chaos all to find a glimmer of safety in a dark brutal world. It was noted that this is just a taste of everything that awaits in the full game where your wits, your ability to explore crafting skills, and her partnership with Hugo are all what keep the pair alive. Hugo is not only your companion on this adventure with those or by the war and the sickness banding together to try to survive will everyone manage to see the light of day once again this looks to be an incredibly dark game but that is honestly what's keeping me engaged to it looks to be a very emotional story a dark story and a story about survival in an absolutely hellacious time period so we'll see how it turns out it's dropping may 14th the same day as rage 2 and i could very well see people just being captivated by plague tale innocence over rage 2 just because of it being a unique and compelling experience a dark experience I don't imagine that this game will do commercially better than Rage 2, but nonetheless, I think there's this quiet anticipation growing for the game, and I do hope that's fully realized by May 14th.
And that's gonna conclude this video. Again, Days Gone is doing incredibly well from a sales standpoint, doing better than Mortal Kombat 11, and it looks to be the biggest launch so far this year, which I find remarkable. But do know that that's just based on UK physical sales. We'll see how everything else pans out and how the entire world takes to Days Gone, but it looks to be relatively positive at this point, at least commercially. May 1st will bring with it the Borderlands 3 worldwide gameplay reveal, so get excited for that. And Plague Tale Innocence, that uncut gameplay trailer looks awesome. Really hope that that turns out to be one of the surprising hits of 2019. That's gonna conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.